students, welcome to HSC Biology in Module 6, Genetic Change. This is video 21 and the second last in our series. And this one is going to be reviewing again biotechnology in agriculture. There does seem to be a little bit of repetition in some of the targeted learning intentions in the Genetic Change module. Here we're going to evaluate the effect on biodiversity of using biotechnology in agriculture. So we'll review a couple of those specific types of biotechnology that have applications to agriculture and see if we can um, think about some of the potential implications and biodiversity of using these particular technologies. <clears throat> you need to make sure that you've got a specific example again, as we've talked about in the past, to be able to um, use that example that you've looked at and expand that into its potential impact and perhaps evaluate uh, what may be the current and potential future impacts of these sorts of um, genetic technologies. So we want to have a look at a couple of these agricultural practices and what sort of genetic technologies have been sp specifically applied in the area of agriculture. So what I'm going to look at in a little bit of detail are monoclonal antibodies. Uh, these have had applications specifically for cancer treatments in humans, but also uh, in the food industry and in agriculture, and in agriculture specifically for combating uh, virulent animal disease. So I'll have a look at one kind of general way in which monoclonal antibodies are produced and how that therefore might uh, have some impact on biodiversity. Agricultural practices that also include genetic techniques include recombinant vaccines, conservation biology, and the preservation of genetic diversity. And obviously, um, particularly through uh, banks, gene banks, uh, seed banks, storage of um, information, genetic information on particular types of organisms um, in order to try and maintain and preserve some of those genes within the wider gene pool, especially in some of those um, species where there may be some endangerment, where there may be some reduction in species diversity. We want to try and preserve some of that genetic diversity through some of the storage uh, that we do have uh, around the world. Uh, a quick walk through monoclonal antibodies, and this is obviously an area that's worth looking at in class in just a little bit more detail. Um, and I can't deal with it in, I guess, complete detail uh, on this video, but we'll try and give you a bit of a general idea. One of the things upon which monoclonal antibodies has been based is this um, area of myelomas, which are cancerous cells. So we know one of the characteristics of cancerous cells is that they have rapid growth rates. They seem to grow um, at an abnormal rate compared to the other cells around them. So we look at these myeloma cells, and then what we wanna do is we wanna inject a particular viral antigen into our mice and the mice are the hosts that are going to actually be challenged with the particular antigen and are going to be um, producing some sort of an immune response um, to the presence of these antigens. What we find is that um, cells within the spleen, spleen's one um, important component um, of the lymphatic system, of the system that's actually going to be responding uh, to the presence of disease-causing organisms or of antigens. And so they're going to be producing particular cells that perhaps are going to uh, produce the specific antibodies that respond to the antigens. So what we need to do is we need to fuse the myeloma cells and the spleen cells in order to form these um, hybrid cells called hybridomas. So once we've been able to do that, then what we need to do is identify, isolate, and culture uh, the specific cells that are growing the specific antibodies. Now, monoclonal, mono means one. We know what clones are. We know clones are identical copies of a cell. So what we want is lots and lots of copies of just one particular cell that's going to be producing these specific antibodies. And, uh, the result of, and we know that the immune system is very specific, so the antibodies are going to be specific to the antigen stimulus that we uh, originally injected the mice with. And what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to culture these particular cells in order to see which ones are specifically producing these um, antibodies 
that we're after. And usually this is done uh, via some sort of a, 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 a complex that allows uh, color identification. So usually with these sorts of um, cultures, you find uh, a color change is an indication of the specific type of antibody that you're after, or at least the cells that are producing that particular antibody. So they're the ones that we want to isolate. They're the ones that we want to ultimately harvest for the um, antibodies that they are producing. So we're trying to take advantage of the um, immune system's ability to recognize specific pathogens, specific antigens, and produce a specific response. Uh, the cells that are associated with that specific response, we want to take advantage of um, myeloma cells that have very fast growth rates in order to um, enable us to produce these particular antibodies uh, from these cells in large quantities at a rapid rate. And so that's kind of the overview of the principle of monoclonal antibodies. Obviously, there's a little bit more detail in that, and we'll have a look at that um, in a bit more detail during class. But what we have to do is we have to link our understanding of um, genetic technologies to biodiversity and how this is changing. And this is a nice little infographic. It's not too old, a couple of years old, um, that that gives an overview of some of the contributions of biotechnology crops to um, food security, sustainability, and also to climate change. All of these are very important current issues and ones that we wanna to continue to keep an eye on. So remember that the, the focus for this is on biodiversity, um, which is basically thinking about the gene pool what genes do we have available? Are we changing the proportions of those in any way, or certainly in any meaningful way? Are we getting any sorts of um, genetic drift happening? Um, or is there some selection that's actually happening that's um, selecting against particular types of um, individuals or qualities within populations? How is our uh, how are our genetic technologies enabling us to create or to modify particular um, populations of individuals uh, that are going to be sustainable? So obviously that um, area of sustainability is another important one. And as uh, human populations continue to grow around the world, we have increasing demand uh, for food, And the simple solution to this is to continue to clear land in order to plant more crops, in order to create more food. But that's only a solution, uh, or that, that sort of solution has a finite um, end to it because we know that there's only so much land that we can keep clearing, there's only so much food that we can keep planting, and if the population continues to grow, then we're gonna end up with a, a very, very significant problem. So we need to look for alternatives we need to think about whether our practices are actually um, contributing to carbon dioxide emission or are reducing that. We also know that uh, methane production can be quite significant from livestock as well. And so we're trying ultimately to address issues associated with high populations, with feeding our populations and with um, using sustainable practices in order to do that. And hopefully not doing that at the expense of biodiversity, both for the particular gene pools that we're looking at, but also for the um, native species that can often be uh, targeted as a result of things like land clearance. Once again, I think with these sorts of um, learning intentions, it's very much about trying to find a specific example that you can talk about in a little bit of detail in order to uh, address a question that may be couched in those sorts of terms around the link between biodiversity and agriculture. Monoclonal antibodies are just one example, and if you've got some other examples that you can look at specifically, you might be wanting to talk about genetically modified organisms, uh, recombinant DNA techniques, genetic engineering, which I haven't talked about in this video, but I have in other videos. Um, the key is that you have some really nice examples that you can use uh, whenever you're um, dealing with each of these sorts of learning intentions. Thanks very much for watching.